So our next talk is about geographic data. Um, it's Abraham. So please. Hello, Abraham. Hello, Simon. Um, so where are you streaming from? Yes. So from where are you streaming from? Yes, I think so. Okay. So, ah, um, ah, 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 you understand. Okay, I, 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 <laughs> okay. I'm, from Vene I'm from Venezuela. Sorry. Okay, okay, great. So you are talking about wildfire um, modeling and you are using some interesting modules like GeoPandas, GeoGMap, etc. So please um, get restart your presentation. Okay, thanks. Um, Hello, uh, it is a pleasure to be here at EuroPython conference. My talk will be about uh, Wi-Fi modeling in Yosemite National Park. At the bottom of this slide uh, are my Twitter social media and, and a link to the GitHub repository where you can access the entire code of this, of this talk. The agenda will be the following. First, I, I will be showing you how to get data for Wi-Fi modeling. Next, I will explain you how to import data for Wi-Fi modeling purposes. Third, I will go through how to simulate Wi-Fi events. And finally, I'll discuss some conclusions. Well, uh, why, why do we model Wi-Fi? Well, we use uh, computational science to perform numerical simulations in order to understand and predict Phi behavior. Wildfire modeling has many applications. First, we use the, this technique to, mod, to protect firefighter cues during fire events. Second, by modeling wildfire, it is possible to reduce building damages and loss of lives. And third, Wildfire modeling allows us to protect ecosystems, hydrological basins, natural areas, and so on. Well, getting data for wildfire simulation uh, could be a daunting activity because data are not readily available or not public, uh, public available. Sometimes data are sparse or, or spread across, more, across multiple sources. So, if we ought to collect our own data, it could be a very expensive activity. So in, in this talk, I will present an, uh, an approach to readily gather and analyze data for Wi-Fi modeling purposes. Our development environment is mainly based on Python and combine the use of Google Earth Engine or GEE, GeoPandas, uh, Map, and GraphGIS that is a, a powerful geographical information software. Everything within a Jupyter notebook to model wildfire events in Yosemite National Park, located in the United States, uh, specifically in California State. File simulations are performed in three areas. In three areas, as you can see in the in the figure, during the summer season season in 2020 from June through September. The initial geospatial data set we need is, is the following. The polygon of the national park, data about moisture content of that vegetation, wind direction, wind speed data sets, information about the canopy variation of vegetation through an enhanced vegetation index or EVI, Landsat 8 and high resolution image, images as uh, base maps for map visualizations and a fuel model defined by the US Forest Service. To obtain the protected area polygon, first we call the, the World Database on Protected Area Feature Collection using the Python API or Google Earth Engine. Next, we extract the Yosemite National Park polygon. 
we we then convert this data into a geo data frame and save it as a shape file in our working directory. The procedure to obtain dead fuel mocture, wind speed, and uh, wind direction is pretty is pretty similar. We we need first to call the GreenMet image collection and filter by date. GreenMet is a meteorological data uh, special data data sets. Next, we select a specific data and calculate the mode. The resulting image is, is clipped to a, to a polygon previously created, and after that, we create random points to sample the image using the mean. Finally, the, the resulting feature, the resulting feature class, uh, feature collection, sorry, is transformed into a geodatabase geodata frame and save as a check file into a working directory. To get the enhanced vegetation image or EVI, we call the Landsat A collection EVI composite from Google Earth Engine. We then, we then filter this image collection by date and bounds using the Yosemite polygon. Next, we calculate a mean image and filter it using a polygon previously created and lastly, the clipped image is exporting to our Google Drive, and from there, we download it to our working directory. As I mentioned previously, to run our fire simulation, we need a fuel defined by the US Forest Service. In this case, we use the 13 Anderson 5 behavior fuel model. This model are 13 classes of fuel which vary in load, distribution, and particle size. We download this model uh, using the graphic using interface of the land file program website. Importing data uh, for wildfire modeling is a two-step process. First, we set up our development environment to use GraphGIs into our Jupyter notebook. Second, we import the database, uh, the data obtained through Google Earth Engine to GraphGI software. When setting up a uh, GraphGI in Jupyter Notebook, we use Python to initialize GraphGI. First, we create a GraphGI runtime environment by passing in a variable the directory where GraphGI is located and tie it to, uh, to the Python uh, grass directory. Then we import the required grass GI Python packages. Let's explain briefly the grass GI data structure. Grass data are stored in a directory referred as database. We can think that a grass GI database is a briefcase containing books. Within this database, the projects are organized by project areas stored in subdirectories called locations. Each location is defined by its coordinate system, map projection, and geographical boundaries. So we can think that a location is a, 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 a location is a book. Each location has many map sets. Thus, a map set is a location subdirectory. We can think that a map set is a book chapter or section. And finally, inside each, each map set, there are maps. Thus, we can think maps are book sheets. This is an, this is an example of GraphGI data format. We can think a uh, database with three locations. And in the first location, we have three map sets. For the map, for the second map set, we have three, four various um, raster, various maps there. So there are raster maps, vector maps, 3D maps, and temporal maps. So we use GraphGI graphic using interface to create our location and map set, as you can see in the figure. We then use uh, GraphGI Python function to initialize the GraphGI session. We pass the folder name where our data are stored and the name of the location and map set. 
We execute GraciI functionality through modules. GraciI has over 350 modules to visualize your special data and manipulate raster and vector data. Modules respect the naming convention shown in the table on the slide. For example, for, for raster modules, we use the prefix R. For vector modules, we use the prefix B, etc. Importing data into GraphGI using Python is straightforward. We simply use the uh, run command function that allows us to execute a module synchronously. The syntax is the following. First, we pass the GraphGI Python function. Next, we call the GraphGI module. In this case, we, we are using uh, um, uh, the, a, ve a vector a module for import vector. That's why this, this it has the prefix v. Next, we call the gra uh, we, sorry. After that, we set the name and path of the data set to to be imported, and finally, uh, we set the name of the of the uh, the output. In the figure below. You, we set the name, uh, we, we can see uh, the, the, the command used to import various data sets. As I mentioned previously, we simulate Wi-Fi events uh, in three areas in Yosemite National Park. The first area is located in the south of the park. Area two is in the is in the cent, is located in the center west of the park and the third area is located in the center east of Yosemite National Park for each area we pose the following question for area 1 we want to know if our simulated file has the same spread as a past fire event called south force that occurred in 2017 for area two, we want to determine how wildfire simulation behaves in a small area on, on a rich top, uh, uh, rich top where vegetation, vegetation is surrounded by bare soil. And for area three, we want to ascertain how wildfire simulation behaves in a large area surrounded by mountains uh, in a valley and during a long time, 32 hours. So to answer the, que the question, first, we, we derive new data from the importing data for each study area. Second, we, we model five events for each area. And third, third we visualize fire, wildfire propagation in each area. Modeling wildfire events is a two-step process. First, we execute the GRACI's R ROS module that generate rate of spread raster maps. Second, we run the grass R, R spread module that simulates an elliptically in isotopy spread. This module generates a raster map of cumulative time of spread. In this context, uh, an in isotopy means variable conditions in different directions. As we assume windy and topographical sharp condition, our, our ROS module needs the following inputs. A raster map containing the one hour fire fuel moisture. It is a very rough estimate of the average moisture content of the forest floor below the surface. surface. A raster map of fuel model, a raster map of the leaf light fuel moisture Raster maps uh, containing wind direction and wind speed, and topographical raster maps like slope, elevation, and aspect. Aspect is the compass direction that the slope faces. So we use the previously importing data to calculate missing R ROS input data. For example, in the table on the slide, we, we use the enhanced, enhanced vegetation in this to calculate the live fuel moisture. We also use a, di the, a digital elevation model to calculate the slope and aspect data sets. As the missing R-ROD input data are calculated for each study area, 
we simply write a, fire, a Python function to compute new data. In this, in the, in this, in this code snippet, we use a GRASI module to calculate the slope and aspect data set from the digital elevation model. We also use a GRASI module to generate raster data set of fuel moisture, wind speed, and wind direction from point data using the inverse distance interpolation technique. Note that we import shortcuts from PyGraph from, from PyGraph to, to deal with raster grass modules. In this case, we use this shortcut to run the GRASI map call function module to and calculate the live fuel moisture from the EVI or enhanced vegetation in this using a linear function or a linear equation. The output of the, ra uh, the R rows are the following. A raster mark containing base rate of spread, a raster mark containing direction of maximal rate of spread, a raster mark containing maximal, uh, maximal rate, a raster mark containing direction of maximal rate of spread, and a raster map containing uh, maximal sporting distance. In our scenario, Sporting distance is the distance covered by burning embers during wildfires, as you can see in the figure on the slide. In this code snippet, we can see the inputs and outputs of the R ROS modules. For the R spread module, the inputs are the following. All the outputs of the R ROS module, a raster map of the starting source, in the next slide, I, I will explain what is that. A raster map containing wind speed and a raster map of the one hour deal that, that fuel moisture content. The R spread module generates a raster map of the cumulative time of spread. For the R spread module, the starting source is a, po is a point where the fire begins. Imagine we draw a lit, a, lit, a lit match or cigarette in the middle of the dry forest. So we can think this is a starting source. To set this starting source, we create a point vector map from, the, from a text file, uh, from a text file containing coordinates, coordinates of the starting, uh, starting point. Then we, we simply convert into a raster map this vector map. In this, code, in this code snippet, we can see the inputs and outputs of the R spread, R, R spread module. To generate raster map of the cumulative time of spread using the grass VI module, we compute uh, spread interactively. In this example, we divide our nine hour simulation in three iterations. So our time lab is three hours. The first iteration starts at zero hours and ends at three hours. We do not set the, the initial time because by default it's zero. The second iteration starts at three hours and ends at six hours. So we set the initial time to three hours. The last iteration starts at six hours and ends at nine hours. Thus, we set the initial time to six hours. Time is in minutes. Also note that the output of the first iteration is the starting source of the second iteration. And the output of the second iteration is the starting source of the third iteration. Well, having executed the R ROS and R spread modules, we can now visualize our results. In this case, we use various GRASI commands to create three of four frames. Each frame contains the rate of spread, the rate of spread raster for each iteration, a vector indicating the source of the simulation, a color infrared composite of the Landsat image or the high resolution image, and the corresponding title, legend, scale, and north arrow. This code, this code snippet shows how we set the frame, 
the color infrared composite image, the red spread, the starting source of the file simulation, the matte title, the legend, the north arrow, and the bar scale. On the slide, you can see the result of the file simulation in the first area. The per we perform a 12 hour simulations. We divide the time span by three, so each iteration takes four hours. Remember that through the simulation, we generate cumulative time of spread. We observe that uh, our, file spread, uh, our file spread is heading towards the South Fork file perimeter, that is a past file event. Note that when the red spread reaches 12 hours, the simulated file takes up approximately a half of the past file polygon. On the slide, we have the result of the file simulation in area two. A nine hour simulation is performed. We divide, in this case, we divide the time span by three, by three. so each iteration takes for uh, three hours. We see that our fire spread is constrained by the presence of bare soil among vegetation patches. In the figure, light blue patches are bare soil, while reddish patches represent vegetated areas. Finally, on the slide, you can see the result of the file simulation in the third area. In this case, a 32-hour 32 simulation is executed. We divide the time span by four, so each iteration takes eight hours. For this simulation, we have a figure showing an animated sequence of the iterations. We observe that our file spreads spreads out toward the Yosemite Valley, generating, generating a mega fire. Know how our simulation avoids no vegetative areas, or in this case, light patches. In conclusion, it is possible to integrate GraphGIS, Google Earth Engine, and Jupyter Notebook in a unique development environment Using, using Python. The, re, the result of the file simulation in the first study area could be used as an indicator of the modeling accuracy because we can simulate wildfires in areas affected by past fire events to compare simulated fires versus real fires. The results of the file simulation in study area two and three, suggest that the modeling raster outputs do not overlap non vegetating areas. In our notebook for the interpolation module, we use default parameters. Well, it, is, it could be very interesting to try out different interpolation parameters and evaluate how they affect simulation outputs. Finally, on this slide, you can see some reference. Uh, I would like to acknowledge my EuroPython mentor, Alexandre, Alexandre Mañaez Savio, for his valuable suggestion. Also to Mario Gulich Institute in Argentina for giving me the opportunity to do the workshop on the special data processing and anal analysis using GraphGIS software. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much for your talk. There are some questions. Let me start with the first one. So you initialized Graskis um, manually. Is there a way to automate this um, and you do it without the GUI? Um, well, uh, generally people, are, uh, uh, people use GraphGI uh, through the graph through the graphic using interface, but GraphGIS can be also used through uh, line commands. And in this case, uh, in my talk, I I will I I presented an approach uh, to use GraphGIS uh, 
uh, using the using the a uh, Jupyter notebook. But uh, uh, GraphGI uh, in 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 should be as as I mentioned previously, or as I mentioned in my in in, in the in the repository, GraphGI should be installed locally to to run my 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 notebook. But uh, uh, many people are are trying to use uh, GraphGI uh, or are investigating or, uh, how to use GraphGI in the in the in the cloud. Okay, so we have a next question. Does the model need to be calibrated? If so, which parameters are usually calibrated in wildfire models? What statistics do you use to describe model uncertainty? Well, the uh, I I use the, the five behavior model produced by the U.S. Forest Service. So I. I I simply download the data I, I use in 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 the notebook. Um, for other for for modeling, uh, uh, the R ROS module and R spread module have uh, various parameters. In in the notebook, I use a default parameter, so it, it could be very interesting to to. To try different parameters according to the the area that someone is uh, studying. Okay. Um, at the moment, there are no more questions. So thank you very much again. Okay. For your talk. And now Thanks. we. We um, are coming to the end of the session, and next will be the lightning talks in in the Optiver room. <laughs>